guys welcome back to the channel today uh, I think agenda is to try this moto vlogging setup and uh, talk about my ownership regarding the Royal Enfield Continental GT Weather today, 27 degrees Celsius. We out here on my 2022 Ducati Street Fighter V4. Uh, I bought this right after I sold my uh, Royal Enfield Continental. So we're not going to talk about this bike. However, uh, you guys have a lot of questions regarding my previous ownership. What did I do for the sound? What did I do for the mods? Um, I probably won't go over all of that, but I would probably go over the experiences that I've had with that bike. So let me get this started by just summing that review in like some words. Royal Enfield Continental GT was probably the best beginner bike for me. Just to give a little bit of background on uh, my motorcycle riding history, I used to ride when I was a kid, maybe 10 years old. Then I started riding my friend's bike. And when I moved out in the Bay Area here in California, I decided to get my motorcycle license. And instead of purchasing a car, I purchased a motorcycle to go around the city. Um, even to go to work and maybe do a little bit of groceries on it as well so after I got my license um, I was actually looking at Honda Rebel 500 and uh, I was actually going to buy it brand new because at the time it was a bit cheaper than the Conti and I didn't want to go through the hassle of you buying a used motorcycle and you know running into a problem or anything like that but Roland Field Conti GT was actually on my radar at the time but it was slightly over budget at the time it was MSRP for six thousand dollars and after the dealer fees and freight charges and whatnot it ended up being like seventy two hundred dollars or something like that out of the out of the gate so I didn't want to spend that kind of money on on uh, on a brand new bike so I was on Facebook marketplace one night and I just happened to come across this listing for a beautiful Venturi Blue Conti GT 650 for I believe $6,800 and that $6,800 was still over my budget at the time because I wanted to pay cash I didn't want to you know go for get a loan out or anything like that for that kind of money so I messaged this person uh, I don't remember their name but she had listed the bike for her husband on Facebook marketplace because her husband is no longer riding the bike the bike is just sitting collecting the dust so I was like wait a second why would you do that to a motorcycle why wouldn't you ride it so I went ahead, threw her an offer for $5,500 because that was the max budget I had at the time. When she replied after two days, she said, no, we can only do $6,500. Uh, we already have some mods, which they were not lying. They've had SNS exhaust, which costs about $700. Radiator guard, which is another hundred dollars. Uh, oil sump car, which is another hundred dollars. Windscreen, one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, so about fifteen hundred dollars, somewhere around there, including labor uh, they had um, into the bike, including the first service at five hundred miles done at the dealership. So I was pretty confident going into the deal. So I was like, hey, I really like the bike. I'm gonna come in with cash in hand max I can pay is $6,200 and they said yes let's do it so I went in rode the bike um, the purchase experience was great um, the people who I met with they were really nice really accommodating they let me test ride it and then obviously I was gonna buy the bike so I gave them cash um, the person did have a loan on the bike that he needed to pay 
and uh, since you know when I met the guy I talked to him for a few minutes he felt very genuine so what we did was um, formed up a formal contract between me and him and uh, that contract basically stated that I'm buying the bike from him for this amount of money and what's gonna happen after that he's gonna take that money go to the bank pay off the loan and send me the pink slip in about a week and that's exactly what he did now talking about the bike itself the amount of money I paid for that bike I was really 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 happy with that bike the bike did everything it went highway speeds it sounded great it handled okay but you know you can't expect too much or too good of a handling for what you're paying um, had great sound as you can all hear in the videos so I got the bike um, I rode it around for like maybe 10 minutes before getting onto the highway and my first ride was scary as hell I went on the highway and uh, for some of you might know that uh, Royal Enfields aren't great um, at high speeds there was a lot of like wobble like this and a lot of vibrations coming at like 80 miles per hour so I kept it slow I kept it around 60 or 65 miles per hour which is you know the speed limit and you should be doing that living with the bike is amazing you get thumbs up from almost everybody on the road because how often do you see something so cool on the road and um, sounding that awesome it was kind of a rare bike here in the Bay Area, you know, not many people have it, so uh, kind of a unique retro looking classic bike, so, you know, a lot of people gave me thumbs up, I loved that attention, and uh, a lot of people had uh, questions about it too, like, hey, is that a Norton, is that a, is that a Triumph, and nobody really knows about Royal Enfield out here, so, uh, it, it was, it was a good conversation starter. Now. Some of the cons for the bike is first of all the bike is too heavy for what it is for a 650 parallel twin that bike weighed about 500 pounds and you know on the highway with that much weight and one brake to stop you or one disc brake to stop you it was some scary scary scenarios i've encountered mo many times that bike would just never stop i would be going speed limit maybe slightly over the speed limit and uh, the cars in front would break immediately and I would have trouble braking so at that time I didn't think it was the safest bike out there so first con is the brakes were not good because it was heavy and only one rotor uh, it was kind of uh, unsafe for me the second con is the handling for that bike Within my first month of owning that bike, I went on a couple of canyon roads and I could immediately tell that the bike just doesn't settle after after a bump or taking a turn. So basically what would happen is if you were taking a turn and then you encounter a slight bump in that turn, the bike would just pogo stick. That was super unsettling, super unsafe. Uh, the roads that I ride around on are basically cliffs that if you mess up they're not coming back you're going down the hill within first month of owning it I had to pitch in like $400 or something like that and plus my own labor into it uh, doing mods on the front forks um, I replaced them with YSS um, preload springs and uh, the valve adjust or not the valve but like the preload adjustment knobs up top so that helped quite a lot that got rid of the handling issues for the front fork but the rear suspension was still pogoing and I just adjusted the preload on that it was okay still really unsafe at high speeds on uh, highway because I believe the problem there was the tires itself they're running like 19 inches tires that are skinny anywhere where there are repairs done to the, the road the, uh, the bike would like slither and I didn't quite like that eventually uh, I stopped taking that bike out on uh, longer rides because um, first of all 
because of the weight and you know in the twisties I would get super tired at the end of the day just riding that bike and um, after that I started just riding the bike to you know work and then going to the gym and whatnot so just local rides loved that experience because you could just like crank it up it would start every time no reliability issues sounded amazing and you could beat on it as much as you want you know full throttle every gear I used to bump it off at the rev limiter the bike itself I'm telling you it's built like a tank I've never had any problems in eight months of owning it and putting up more than 5,000 miles on it living experience some good some bad but overall amazing I couldn't have asked for any better bike for my first uh, first ownership of a motorcycle that's a beautiful road continuing with uh, the serviceability of the bike I did an oil change and valve adjustment myself road I had to do it for you guys <laughs> so serviceability for Royal Enfield Conti GT650 is great um, you can do oil changes you can do valve adjustment you can do uh, what else are you gonna do maybe timing adjustment but that's something a bit more critical but you know usual maintenance valve adjustment and uh, oil change you can get it done with like half a day pretty simple to do take off the fuel tank you get plenty of clearance under there uh, all you need is some tools and you're good to go all right now time comes to answer some of your questions you guys had about the bike how many miles per gallon do i get on that bike i'm a rough rider so i don't baby them i got around 50 miles per gallon and uh, on a full tank i'd probably go around 120 130 miles until the light comes on and then you know the fuel gauge being inconsistent as it is um, I would have to stop for a gas well before the light has come on so every hundred miles I, I got the refill and the second question you had what kind of pipes I had it had on it SNS exhaust slip-ons you don't need headers just trust me get the SNS take out the DB killers and you'll think me for the rest of your life that sound from those pipes is amazing what is the top speed you ask the top speed on that bike as scary as it is to do is around 110 miles per hour I don't know where this road goes but we're gonna take it uh, there's a lot of gravel so 110 miles per hour is the top speed for that bike and I know I get a lot of questions in my Instagram DMs and under the comment section. You guys have a lot of questions regarding the sound recording and how I captured the sound. I'll make another detailed video about that maybe sometime later. All in all, I would have to say that the 8 or 9 months I've owned that bike was amazing like I couldn't have asked for any better bike if you were planning on buying that bike as your first bike or even if you're a returning rider uh, I'd say do it I don't think I don't think you can go wrong with that purchase and uh, those bikes hold their resale value pretty good because you know they're cheap to begin with and if anybody's buying it uh, they're not buying it for you know performance or handling they're buying it because they love the looks for that bike and if you love the looks for that bike, you know, you you obviously going to have to um, compromise on, on performance and handling. So um, if anyone's buying it, they're buying it for looks and they hold re their resale value pretty well. Um, I, I got mine for $6,200 after nine months and 5,000 miles. I sold it for $5,500. After riding that long, I don't think I lost money on that all right so that's it guys um let me know how you like this motor vlog setup um how's the sound coming in how's the quality of the video um and uh if you have any topics in your mind feel free to drop it in the comment section below and thanks guys catch you later peace out